Tayo Tam Shakti Chakra Vibhava Prabhavam Shankaram Numaha Tam Shakti Chakra Vibhava Prabhavam Shankaram Numaha Yes, Brahmaraj Ki Uh, we are going to learn Shiva Sutras. This is uh, one of the important work of Kashmir Shaivism. Actually, we can say this is the primary work of Kashmir Shaivism. So this uh, Kashmir Shaivism is important in our philosophy because uh, it is connected to all yoga philosophy. So the yoga of uh, Hatha Yoga or all branches of yoga. And not only yoga, the famous uh, Tantra philosophy is also based on Kashmir Shaivism. And therefore it is very important for a sadhaka in that uh, uh, yoga or whatever philosophy we learn to know what the Kashmir Shaivism says. We have a Vedanta philosophy as uh, Shankara Vedanta philosophy is very famous. We learn here that philosophy. So this uh, Shiva Sutras, you can see when we learn it. So we have 77 Sutras. So we will try to complete it. So this uh, Shiva Sutras also is talking about the Vedanta in a different level. There are some uh, uh, variations that, uh, for example, Ishwara and Maya, like uh, in Vedanta we have Ishwara and Maya. So this philosophy also has Ishwara and Maya. But uh, in uh, Shankara Vedanta, is Maya is not eternal. Maya as a Shakti or the power of Ishvara in connection with creation. So once there is no creation or when the sadhaka attained moksha, liberation. So he is free from creation and created objects. He is one with the Atman, Paramatma, and uh, then there is no maya and object for him. So we can say in uh, Vedantic philosophy, Maya is not ultimate. But on the contrary, here Maya is also eternal with the Shiva. The Shiva and Shakti both are eternal. Actually, uh, the Shiva is known because of Maya. That is what they say the Shiva Shakti and the Shiva uh, Shakti Chakra they have a word used Shakti Chakra so this Maya Shakti has many forms many activities we can say the uh, all creation is because of Maya Shakti as Vedanta says the same 
but it is eternal. And uh, regarding creations and how it is created and all this, there is some differences with the philosophy. That is very, you know, very uh, deep level of philosophy or the, that we can say. But if we know, we learn little bit of this Kashmir Saivism, we can easily understand yoga philosophy, sankhya philosophy, tantra and Vedanta as well. So that is there. And if you are doing Upasana, if you are doing uh, like uh, Devi Upasana or Shiva Upasana or something like that or meditation, uh, there, are, there are many types of meditation. One of the famous book called Vijnana Bhairava. So this is on meditation only. There are 112 types of meditations are mentioned there. This is all connected to Kashmir service. So in Kashmir Shaivism, one uh, eminent Acharya was very famous, Vasu Gupta. So the story is, he got this Shiva Sutra directly from Shiva, for the knowledge. And Vasu Gupta wrote this, and there are so many commentary on this. Trema Raja's commentary is very famous. Then Abhinava Gupta, one of the uh, Acharya, very uh, famous Acharya on Kashmir Shaivism. He wrote many books, Ishwara Pratyabhijna and all those books. <coughs> His story is also there uh, in uh, Shankara Digvijaya. So there is some connection with Abhinava Gupta. And he wrote commentary even on Gita. One commentary is there in his name. So this is the uh, theory. We have uh, less time, so we will uh, discuss the main po uh, main points in detail, and then it's uh, good factor. Then after that, you can read the uh, books connected to this, so you will get more information. So I will just explain the basic theories of this, like. Uh, what is consciousness and what is bondage and all those whatever comes here. So we have 77 sutras. The 77 sutras are divided into three parts. The first part is called Shambhavopaya. Shambhavopaya. So the way of Shiva. It is direct talk. And the second one Shaktopaya. And the third one is called Anavopaya. The fine way, the, uh, what you say, the Sukshma Marga. So we have three parts. So we start with the uh, Shambhavopaya. So in this, there will be many technical terms which uh, we are not familiar with because uh, a new philosophy as we learn from uh, uh, the point of view of Vedanta we will understand most of the test it is very easy in that way and uh, some sutras are connected to uh, yoga and Few sutras are connected to Tantra. So the a word Bhairava is used for Paramatma, the ultimate God. So that is also there. It's all the word, the technical terms are different. So in Shambhavopaya, the word meaning of Shambhava, Shambhu is Shiva, is very famous which is connected to Shambhu is called Shambhava. So in Sanskrit, there is a uh, method to make it, making the connections. It is called Taddhida. So 
in any from any word any name you can make such words so it will show the connection so shambhava it means is connected to shambhu shiva relating to shambhu upaya we know the means the sadhana the marga is called upaya so shambhava upaya means the sadhana directly told by shiva so that meaning we can take the first sutra we chant the sutra चैतन्य चैतन्य आत्मा इन दिस सूत्र वी हैव टू वर्ड्स दिस सूत्र आर वेरी शॉर्ट फॉर्म ऑफ फिलोसफी दे वेरी कंटेंस द फॉर्म therefore in one sutra you may have two words three words like like that but the explanation can be a long for pages we can explain it so chaitanya mahatma it directly says the consciousness is self so now uh, when we see the sutra is very clear there is nothing hidden but uh, to know what is this consciousness is in other words we can say awareness is the nature of self so awareness is the being of self so awareness is the experience of self uh, ah yes chaitanya mahat is very it is very clear director uh, talking so now uh, as i said we have to contemplate on this because this is an important sutra so this sutra is going to carry all the philosophy of this 76 sutras so now we know this words consciousness awareness uh, and uh, experience all this now what does it mean we start from the word experience so experience actually what is experience we say we experience the objects outside we have experience of uh, our life we experience many things in our life so there are, the all life is an experience it's a continuum but actually what what is this experience what we call as experience it is a is it a thought is a thought process is it a, an action can we say it is an action or it an a reaction or a thought process or an idea or a, a feeling a emotion the an amo no is a reaction to the knowledge which we get from the senses yeah that is one eh? it is it is it is reaction uh, of the knowledge which we get from the object so when we see an object we get some uh, our mind reacts to that object so that reaction is called experience that is what he says yes uh, that can be one uh, definition can be defined now my question is what you what we actually experience when we have experience that is my question this is uh, what he said is also there because when we see something we are react she says a reaction but uh, after reaction we have a, an experience we can say but uh, that is on one level we can understand what we ideas like we see a flower a beautiful flower outside so we react to it oh it is a beautiful flower that is how wonderful it is so we 
get uh, that sensation of that flower as a, a beautiful flower and a positive experience and good experience. So we call it, we are happy to see the flower outside. So the experience can be called a joyful experience, a good experience, a positive experience. Is it right? Is it the experience we are uh, trying to understand? It can be a thought process. Because when you see a flower, see the flower and uh, you like the beauty of the flower, the shape of the flower, color of the flower, the flavor of the flower, everything you like. And then uh, uh, there is a thought process made connected with that. So that thought process gives you a good experience. So you, you say it is good. Mm. Yeah. So that uh, in that uh, we can add this uh, into the hash, uh, like uh, uh, why we say the flower is good, because we have a previous experience, previous memory, which is uh, correlating with the present memory, and it the previous memory suggests that this uh, what you saw is good. Because previous experience says, or the memory says, it is good. You had a good experience, a good, uh, uh, what is it, enjoyment with this. Therefore, it is good. This is a normal process because how we decide what is good and bad. Yeah, it's the previous experience connected to the new thought. So that is okay. But that is not the experience. Is it the experience? You are remembering it, like we are sitting here, uh, you know, quietly and remembering many things and having some, some, uh, you know, beautiful thoughts that uh, you feel good. Can we call it as an experience? If it brings some joy or sadness, then that emotion is an experience. Ah, yes. So now it is uh, that the emotion can be uh, said as experience. So, yeah, that we can take if uh, how the emotion is an experience. The joy and the pain or sorrow what we experience, we call it emotions, emotions of brain or emotions of the feeling. The feeling can be experience. Now how we, how we feel it, the same theory. Because we see something uh, which relates to the previous thought process or previous memory. So it gives a good feeling. Then it is called joyful uh, feeling that emotion comes as joy. And sometimes emotion comes as greed, as uh, uh, not enjoying the situation. So this, that, that difference is there. So this is also is uh, likely to experience, the connector to experience. Now, for any of this, we call it a experience as a emotion or a thought process, uh, as the reaction to the object, seeing the object, perceiving the object. These are all connected to Mind and sense organs. Mind and sense organs. It means if there is no mind or the mind is not active, the sense organs are not active, it means you will not have any experience. Huh? Right? <laughs> <laughs> If this is, all these are experiences, then if the mind is not working and the sense organs are not working, the objects are not there, you have no chance for any reaction or having any emotion. So then there is no experience, if we call it as it. Is it right? Huh? Ah, so you see? So therefore, 
Therefore, we cannot say all these are experience. There, there is some connection with experience, it's a part of experience. The actual experience is still different from this. It should be different from this. If uh, our mind is not working, for example, like we are experiencing a deep sleep or a coma without thoughts, mind is not working. So we know that in deep sleep there is no mind. So we say there is no experience. We can we call it there is, there is there is no experience? No. Why? Because that uh, stage of sleep, the deep sleep, the profound sleep, is a good experience. Because when we wake up, we say, "Oh, I had a good sleep. It was wonderful." Oh, that's uh, the experience. Is like no, you are uh, blooming with the experience. So it means that is also experience. So there is no mind working, and no sense organs, no ego, no identification, no uh, nothing is connected. You are, even you are not aware that you are a man or woman or where you are sleeping and how you are sleeping. Nothing is there. Nothing. Remember, no connection. But you have the experience. That is experience, no? You can call it experience. Why? Because we know it. We cannot deny this experience. So seeing a flower is also experience. Means sense, uh, sensual uh, experiences also experiences. We call it as a experience. But this experience is also experience. Now compare. Which experience is more connected to you or which experience is uh, uh, permanent in you or which experience is unconditioned? So that experience would be the actual experience of yourself which is always there. That must be the experience of your self, what we call it here, the nature of self. Right? So now, in uh, our experience, the day-to-day -day experience, in this empirical uh, experience, we can call the deep sleep experience as most direct experience of our own self. Why? Because there is no conditions added. The condition I mean to say, extensive organs, the mental conditions, good or bad and all those things, and the physical condition of uh, men and women, the sex and all those things. And the intellectual conditions, your education, your you know, all what you know, what you don't know, all those. And the ego, the condition of condition of ego, the, your self-esteem, that is also not touching that. Right? So if we have this experience, this should be the experience beyond all this. Organism. So that experience must be the self experience. So when we are in the condition of one sleep, one other, or let's say like one awake to sleep, huh. one sleep to be sleep, it looks like there are two seconds of experience between those hours. Are those like considered uh, experience? So you know, like when you move from awake to sleep, you know? Yeah, I will come to that point. So when we move to one stage to another stage or one, st uh, one experience to another experience, like to from the waking state, from Jagrat to Swapna, the waking state to do, uh, uh, sleep and, uh, sorry, dream state and from dream stage to the uh, deeper level. 
you say there is some connections and there is some gap, some, some space between. Actually, the space between is not only there, the space between two thoughts can also experience if you meditate on that. So I have come to that point. So how this uh, Atma can be uh, known as experience. Now we I take the word as experience. Now you see what we uh, confirmed is now this deep sleep experience seems to be unconditioned and uh, comparatively permanent. Permanent in the sense we have a long time experience without condition. And there is no time and space because we don't remember the time in deep sleep. When we wake up, we remember because seeing the clock we say, oh I slept for five hours, slept for two hours. So that clock is outside. So there is no time in the deep sleep stage of experience. Where you don't remember anything. And there, as we started the discussion with the memories, the previous memories, in the deep sleep, in that experience, there is no memory connection. No memory is connected. You are not remembering what you did before or what you are going to do or what you have, all those things, the memory is not connected. You remember how long you slept or you remember the experience of sleep that is after when you wake up. It means mind works there in a very, very uh, minute form, in a, in a very subtle level. Something is working there. That is, uh, we can see uh, even in the, uh, with the uh, instruments, uh, the, uh, the, we can uh, understand by the machines, the brain, how brain works and all those. This is not our subject, how it is coming. But the, that experience, since it is unconditioned, that can be taken as the base experience of our life. That is what I want trying to say. Because we don't have the experience of Samadhi. We don't have the experience of Asampratnyata Samadhi and Sampratnyata Samadhi at that level. Because we will have the same. But this experience daily we have. So if we take that uh, deeper, deep sleep experience as the background, as the substratum of the life, what we are leading, the, uh, the base of all the thought process, then what we can say is, this experience will continue with all our activities. Right? We can say that. But, you know that when you work, you, rem uh, you think that I am sleeping? I have the sleep experience with the work? No. See, if you do that, you will fall asleep. <laughs> so, see, if you are working for a, uh, some project or something, you are doing seriously. If uh, you say, no, no, I am uh, working with this, I am working while sleeping, or I am uh, working uh, no, with the experience of sleep. So, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so, <laughs> But actually it is happening. This is what is happening. Now, if this is happening, why it is so? Because that, uh, in that deep sleep, what we experience, what we say sleep, deep sleep. But the experience is without condition. That Therefore I added the word as without condition, the conditionless. Conditionless means it should be permanent. Because if we put any condition, when the condition changes, 
it would go. But there is no condition, so it cannot be brought as you like and it cannot be uh, separated as you like. You cannot bring sleep when you like to. You can only make the preparation for sleeping. But sleep will come with song. And sleep will go with song. It, why it is so? Because your conditions are not applied there, not working there. That is the proof that your conditions are not applied there. When you fall asleep, you feel like sleeping very seriously. You will just sleep anywhere, you will be sleeping. If you are not sleeping well, you are not getting get good sleep. If you sleep in a, a good bird with you know, all the 10,000, uh, uh, 50,000, uh, you know, uh, the costly, what is a cushion bird, you will not get sleep. You will be uh, roaming around. See, it means that is not, the conditions are not applied there. This is all connected to our mind. If you want to get sleep, good sleep, you can just uh, sleep in some, something like this. In a very simple mat, you will get good sleep. So, that is what I am trying to uh, say is, this, this sleep experience is unconditioned. So, we have to understand, this will continue in all our stages. Like in waking stage and dream stage and when we are happy, when we are unhappy, when we are eating and when we are talking, when we are doing and meditating and all this, this will continue. We should continue. Why? Because it is so connected to self. It is connected to self. Okay. So now your question. Now, if that is the case, why we are unable to uh, experience that, the deep sleep experience when we are in waking state or when we are uh, doing something, when our mind is active, why we are unable to remember that, why we, are, uh, why we could not get that uh, uh, relaxation, that peace of mind, when you are working. You are correct. Now, the reason is, now the second word comes. We are not aware about that experience. When we work, our mind is activated in connection with the thought or the objects. Therefore, mind is engaged with the objects. We are un we have no awareness of the deep sleep. To get that awareness, one should relax the mind and keep the mind quiet. Then you will get that when we, we try to do in the meditation. So when we try to keep the mind quiet, we have a good experience, uh, the experience something uh, like uh, in deep sleep. So the awareness comes. And in meditation you can remember the experience of sleep, not the sleep. If you remember the sleep, you will fall asleep. So, but the experience of the sleep, the good feeling, the relaxation, the, the mind, how the mind gets relaxed in the deep sleep. If you remember that, you can easily meditate. So now the second word, awareness came. So we are not aware about the uh, nature of the, the essential nature of the self, which is peace, which is uh, full of relaxation, the bliss, the, uh, the experience what we have. So we are not aware of the, the essential uh, nature of the self. Therefore, we feel we are something else. So, when you are not aware about the essential self or what you are, you will take some other conditions uh, applied to you. 
Like if you have no work, the mind will find some useless work. Some unnecessary nuisance. Why? Because mind needs to think something. Mind needs to be active when it is awake. So it will find some objects and find out. Similar, some same thing is happening. Because you are unaware about your essential nature, you are tra- your mind is trying to bring all the conditions, the ego, intellect, ma, the thought process, objects, and desires, uh, happiness, unhappiness. So everything will come one after another. So this come now what we can say is these conditions are applied to the self. Therefore, the nature of the self is unexperienced. We are not aware about the self. This is what is happening. Okay. And now, this experience or this awareness, we call it as consciousness. Normally in English we call it as consciousness. This consciousness is not a correct translation of uh, the Chaitanya. But uh, we don't have a uh, another word in English. So we say consciousness. I will explain why the consciousness word is not uh, uh, very correct. So now you have these two things. One is that uh, the experience of Self, that is as experience in the deep sleep, we compare with the deep sleep. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that only in deep sleep you have, you have the experience. No. The self experience is there always. Because self is there always. In all conditions, self is self. You are not, uh, uh, departed from self or separated from self. You are always Self or your self. So you cannot uh, uh, leave the nature of self because the essential nature of an object will not leave its nature in any condition. It will carry the nature of the self. That you learn from science, you know that. The character of an object is always the character of an object, if it is real, it is applied or the con- it is uh, connected or conditioned, then it can be changed. But the original nature, the essential nature of the self or any object cannot be changed. Like, like the fire has the essential nature as heat. The heat cannot be separated from fire. Similarly, if the self has this experience as bliss and peaceful and relaxation as its character, what we experience in deep sleep, that self will carry it everywhere. Even when you are angry, even when you are hungry, even when you are worried, even when, even when you are tensed, in all conditions that, that will be there. The problem is you will not remember that in that conditions. Because there the condition is predominant. The experience is forgot. The experience has no connection with the mind there. It means you don't remember it. So therefore, uh, if somebody can do that, when you have uh, all the problems, if you can remember how I feel myself as in deep sleep, so immediately your mind will change. You will be relaxed. But it is not normal. We have to practice it because we have never practiced it. We apply many techniques to relax our mind. But the real technique is this. You directly take the uh, nature of self, the characteristics of self. Okay? So now the two things are clear. One is that experience is the real experience is self experience on that background all other experiences happens appears and disappears 
and this real experience is always there it is not impermanent it is permanent okay and why we are not uh, having that experience in all our life in all our stages of life because we are not unaware we are unable to be aware about that experience so it is we are not having that experience now in these two we if we be think about what the consciousness is normally what we say i am conscious about what i am talking about we say i am conscious i know what i am talking i know what i am doing i know what i am thinking and what i know uh, what is my personality so everywhere we say i know i know i know i know so this is there so now even now we say i know what is deep sleep is i know what is dream is so what does it means in another word we can say i am conscious about my thoughts i am conscious about my experiences i am conscious about my desires i am conscious about my angry i am conscious about my all experiences object and subject and all this so this is something different from what we are we are talking about now you are conscious about something so there is an object which you are conscious about and the uh, as uh, the, you are yourself who has the consciousness about the object so the knower and the known the object and subject so we have so many objects so as i said we are even conscious about our ego and intellect and mind it means as we are conscious about the object outside the conscious about the object in front we say i am conscious about my intellect so then it is proved if you are conscious about an object that object is different from you it is for sure that object is different from you there is no argument so we can say wherever you have this sort of consciousness the objective consciousness you are different from that object that's correct no you are not that object you are different from the object if there is no object can you can we say that uh, i am conscious about conscious about the absence of object can we say that? is it right no so if we don't have any object in front we cannot say that uh, i am i am aware about i am conscious i am conscious about the absence of that object so i am conscious about the absence of money i don't have money so i don't i can say that i am conscious about the absence of money what is the wrong with that? Hmm. actually that is not an experience it is not correct to say you are conscious about the absence of something you can say that i am conscious about an object or an, am, normally when we speak but the absence of object is also an object then there is no uh, 
knowing without an object. Sometimes the object is in actual form. Sometimes the object is in memory. Yes, that is all. But the absence, the absence of an object, it means you are not experiencing the object, but the absence of an object. The absence cannot be known and experienced. So the object will be there in memory and absence, absence is, uh, uh, what do you say, attributed there. Then you say, there is no other object. When I say there, there is no pot here, I remember the pot and you also remember the pot. Then you say, oh, yeah, there is no pot. So nothing to do with this, the space what we are connecting with. It is there in the memory. So pot is there, it means still the object is there. So without an object, no knowledge can ca happen. Therefore, if we are conscious about the object outside, we should say this consciousness is always there. The, the ability to experience is always there. Okay, time of the yes. So that consciousness is always there, it means the experience of consciousness is always there. Now this consciousness, again we take the uh, the experience of deep sleep, this consciousness, what we experience in deep sleep, is the actual nature of self. So from this, this is called Chaitanya. In, in Sanskrit, the word is used Chaitanya, Chaitana, Chit. All those is called consciousness. So this is the consciousness. This consciousness is unattributed. It has no color, no form. The objects are uh, related to that or objects are reflected in that consciousness. So we see or, uh, uh, we see the object, what is there in our mind. The consciousness can see and experience the object only from the mind. The mind is the object of consciousness. Then what, what does it mean when we see outside the object? This object is outside. So this is what we call as uh, perceiving the perception of an object. Is it mind, uh, is it mind or the object outside? What, what we are seeing it? Is it mind or object? Huh? It is not object. Yes, that is we the consciousness or I can or you can you cannot see the actual upset object without mind. This mind is not applied there, the object is not experienced. Therefore, the direct experience of an object is from mind only. This is we are receiving through eyesight, the object through eyesight and it goes to the brain as you know all the process and then the form is form there in the brain and when then we say I know this object. If the form is not there, you cannot say I know it. So this is what is happening. Like we, we know from inside and we are saying it is outside. This is wrong understanding. This mithya. So what you are experiencing, the all objects are inside in the mind and you say it is outside. Therefore it is wrong understanding. Mithya. Saadhyana. That we will talk about in the next sutra. So today we uh, took the first sutra only and uh, there is uh, some confusion with the timing.
so tomorrow we will continue with the class uh, till 3:50 okay so we stop here ಪೂರ್ಣಮತಃ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಿದ ಪೂರ್ಣಾತ್ಪೂರ್ಣಮುದೇ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾದಾ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಶಿಷ್ಯಂ ಶಾಂತಿ ಶಾಂತಿ